Okay, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Alexander Polianski, who will talk about uh, Planck problems, and discrete geometry, and convexity. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Polianski, and uh, today I'd like to share with you um, uh, some classical problems in discrete geometry and in convex geometry as well. Uh, this collection of problems is known as Planck problems. And uh, first of all, I would say a little bit more about my results. So let's start. So first, um, just let me give uh, some quick overview of my talk. Am I right that I have about one hour? Yeah. So uh, first, uh, I say a few words about block perspective. So about covering problem, problems in discrete geometry, geometry in general. Then I will turn your attention to uh, plane problems. First, I will speak about classical results. Then about spherical results, such as fish thoughts uh, zone conjecture. And at the end of my talk, I will speak about uh, polynomial type results uh, uh, about plans. At the end of my talk, I will say a few words about future possible directions. So, um, here is a, one slide about broad perspective. So, uh, there are two kind of um, uh, uh, dual directions in uh, geometry. Uh, so there are problems about parkings and coverings. So by a parking, I mean a collection of convex body uh, in the Euclidean space, such that no two of them uh, share an interior common point. And uh, there is a classical problem coming from Kepler. Uh, what is the uh, maximum density of a parking uh, of, a, of the space by congruent copies of um, uh, the Euclidean ball? And uh, this problem was studied uh, from different perspectives by like Gauss, Stuart, Eshtot, Hales, Pizoska, and many, many other researchers. And uh, basically, all these people need some breakthrough, but of course, there are much, much more results. Also, uh, another direction which is also quite uh, popular in discrete geometry is uh, about covering problems. So, and, um, and the question basically is similar, but it's about the uh, Minimal uh, possible uh, density of the covering of a space, of the space, and uh, there are results by Tue and Rogers. Uh, so Tue studied the problem in the plane. Rogers studied the problem in the d-dimensional space, uh, and actually there are there is almost no progress uh, in this problem. Uh, but um, there is another variation of the covering problem is uh, about some local covering, so about local density basically, and it's uh, known as uh, levy hadwig uh, problem, and it was uh, proposed in the 50s and later it was popularized by, by Botyansky in the 60s. So what's the problem? Uh, you have a convex uh, body and you are interested in the minimal number of homotopic copies of this convex body to cover this original convex body, provided that each homotopic copy is smaller than the original convex body. So this is uh, some classical problem in discrete geometry, and for many years there was no progress till 2021 when Juan Slonka, uh, Kotz, and uh, Ritzo uh, managed to significantly improve upper bounds in this problem. And um, among problems about covering, uh, there is one classical direction that I would like to speak about. 
So about blank covering, I would like to speak about blank covering problems. So here is the main hero of my talk, a plank. So what is a plank? Uh, a plank of means uh, W is just a set of points lying between two parallel uh, hyperplanes in the Euclidean d-dimensional space. So in case of the plane, we just draw two parallel lines and look at something between these two, at, 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 at the region between these two. Uh, lines. Analogies that we do, we can imagine that we live in three dimensional space and uh, consider a similar uh, complex region. So, uh, for simplicity, you may assume that we live in two dimensional space or in three dimensional space because uh, basically uh, the proofs, uh, almost all proofs uh, that I will, okay, I will not show you proofs, but almost all results uh, work. Okay, the arguments in this kind of problems usually work in, uh, if it works in one dimension, say in three dimensional space, then it works, this argument usually works in any dimensional space. So, um, so, uh, so it's independent of the dimensional argument. So, and we can define uh, widths of a convex body. So, by convex body, I mean uh, a convex set. Uh, um, compact convex set with non empty interior, so it has some volume, some positive volume. And uh, the width of a convex body is basically the smallest width of one plank covering this convex body. And so here is some illustration uh, showing what's the width uh, of a convex body. And here is the classical problem. It was uh, proposed by Tapsky in uh, 1932, and uh, it was solved by Ben in early 50s. So what's the problem? Uh, so we have a convex body, and we want to cover this convex body by a family, a finite family of planks. And we want to say something about the total width of these planks. And uh, this theorem uh, uh, says this conjecture of Tarski says that, that the total width of this collection of planks covering a given convex body is at least <coughs> the width uh, of one plank covering this convex body, the, the smallest width of one plank covering this convex body. So basically, the best way, uh, the, the most efficient way to cover the con a convex body is just use one plank or use a collection of planks. Uh, that are parallel to each other and lie in, the, in the row. Uh, so, uh, so what should I say about this problem? Of course, I should mention that Tarski confirmed this conjecture in a special case when we walk, uh, when uh, our convex body is a disk in the plane, or in, it's a three-dimensional wall. Um, but unfortunately, his argument must work in high dimensional spaces, even uh, in the case of uh, Euclidean laws. Uh, so, to prove uh, this um, theorem, to confirm this conjecture, Bank um, found a very elegant lemma. I will show you it in a minute. Uh, so, um, so, what is the direction of a plank. It's, uh, it's another concept. Uh, so when we have a plank, uh, we can consider vectors orthogonal to the uh, hyperplane supporting this, um, uh, bounding this plank. Um, and let's look at the vector which uh, at, at, at vectors of, of width uh, one half of the width of this plank. And there are two possibilities, of course, as it's drawn on the picture, V and minus V. And uh, each of these uh, vectors, V or minus V, will call the direction of, a plank, of this plank. And um, so once we have a collection of planks, uh, we may choose direction uh, for each of these planks. And in the result, we have 2 to 2 n possibilities if originally we have n planks. So on the picture I chose some, some directions. Um, and here is the lemma. So for any, uh, for any uh, point in space, 
any point T in the space, in, in, in any collection of n open blanks. Uh, so it, uh, this is the only place where I assume that the blanks are open. Usually I uh, consider closed blanks. Uh, so of course it's clear what I mean by open blanks. So blanks without boundary hyperplanes. And uh, we can find collection of directions of these blanks in a way that uh, the point T plus V1 plus Vn is not covered by our blanks. So basically, what's the meaning of this? Uh, what's, uh, what, does it, what does it mean? What does the statement mean? Um, it means that uh, if we take any point in space, uh, and uh, okay, if we have a collection of planks and we take any point in the space, then uh, sufficiently close to this point, we can find a point that is not covered by our planks. Uh, and this uh, closeness can be measured in terms of the, of the widths, in some sense, or of, of the directions of our planks. And uh, so, what should I mention about this plank, about this lemma? This is uh, this lemma looks uh, very elementary, and indeed it's, it has very elementary proof. It's based on some uh, optimization, elementary optimization idea. But it turns out that it's very strong to, I will show soon uh, where it was applied. Uh, but before that, I'd like to mention that uh, there is a generalization of this lemma proved by Alexey Balitsky in 2021. Uh, he uh, introduced a new concept, it's called multiplex. And uh, his idea came, okay, well, once he read, of finding of cadets, he decided to understand uh, the proof for this uh, result and somehow after working, after thinking about the result of cadets, he realized that it's possible um, to generalize it and somehow he came up with some ideas, multiplanks. Unfortunately, I will not give a definition of these multiplanks, but I think that it's one of the very promising directions for study uh, in this topic. Um, okay, here is a connection of um, Banks' lemma with different uh, directions in mathematics. So here I mention, for example, theoretical computer science. Uh, there is uh, some uh, relatively uh, classical program. It's called essential cover program. Uh, it's called the essential cover problem, um, and uh, for many years there was no progress in this problem. Till 2021, when Nikuda and have improved the bound in this problem, what the problem is very easy to, I think it's quite easy to state. So we have a um, um, uh, Boolean cube, in the, and uh, uh, imagine that it's embedded in the d dimensional space. And we want to cover the vertices of this Boolean cube by hyperplanes in a way that these hyperplanes um, uh, have directions, uh, so the corresponding vectors, with no zeros. And uh, the question is to use the minimal number uh, as less, uh, what's the minimal number of? Hyperplanes, we need to cover the vertices of this hypercube uh, using these kind of planes uh, with directions with no zeros. Uh, and uh, the, maybe there are some other extra combinatorial conditions, but they are of this sort. And uh, somehow you could in the have improved the low bound in this problem. And one of the tools is uh, the bank, it's bank lemma. Another uh, intriguing uh, application of Banks' lemma was found by Keith Ball. He, uh, in 1992, he uh, improved uh, uh, the low bounds on the density of lattice parking. Um, and it was very, very unexpected application for this uh, lemma. And uh, the truth direction is kind of, uh, where this lemma appears, it's in the functional analysis. For example, there is a result of Fyodor Nazarov. He somehow settled the so-called coefficient problem. 
with some uh, problem in functional analysis uh, which can be stated in, um, okay, it has, its statement is very similar to the statement of Banks lemma and actually the proof is also um, resembles the proof of uh, Banks lemma but somehow it's a little bit different. And actually there is, I would say there is even a big direction in functional analysis where people study um, banks type problems um, but they are usually uh, a little bit more uh, uh, technical I mean the statements in this uh, direction mm. uh, so okay as I said banks is a strong tool however it's, um, uh, banks came with a problem uh, which can be settled using this lemma uh, so, so first let me give you a definition so uh, definition of a relative fix. So we have a complex body, and uh, we can and we have a plank, and we can define a relative width with respect to this complex body in the following way. So we say uh, have a blue plank, uh, so it's in the mid, and uh, we consider another plank which is parallel to the original plank and covers our convex body and has the minimum possible width. And then we take the ratio of our initial plank and the new plank. And this kind of ratio is the relative width of our plank. And uh, basically, uh, uh, Banks came up with the following conjecture. The total relative width of any collection of planks covering a given convex body is at least one. And it's very easy to understand that uh, actually this conjecture uh, is a strengthening of the result of that, uh, of uh, Tarski's conjecture. Um, unfortunately, uh, this conjecture is open. Uh, even in the case, okay, it can be uh, shown that for two planks, uh, this statement is true. It's not very difficult to prove. But for three planks, it's open. So imagine that you just have three planks up in a convex cell, and this is uh, this statement is still uh, not proved. What should I mention else? That uh, the only progress towards this conjecture is the so-called uh, okay, it's a result of Kid Ball uh, from 1991. He proved this conjecture in a special case when our convex body is centrally symmetric. Uh, so this is the only known result and it's, I, I think it's quite not technical but it's a little bit unclear or proof for me and for almost all mathematicians with whom I spoke uh, with whom I discussed this result. Unfortunately it's unclear how to use the method developed in this uh, paper. So what else? Okay, the next hero of my talk. So now I would like to speak about uh, my results. And, uh, okay. My joint result was my co uh, So, uh, first, I'd like to speak about spherical variation of the problem. Uh, so, um, we have a unit sphere. Imagine that um, we live in a tree. However, all results that I will mention uh, are valid in high dimensional spaces. And uh, on the surface of this sphere, we can define a great circle. Basically, it's uh, uh, any circle with the largest radius on, on, on the surface of a sphere is called a grid circle. Um, and basically, it's intersection of the sphere with a plane passing through its center. For simplicity, uh, let's say that the center of this sphere coincides with the origin. So, and here is the definition of a zone. So what is it? So basically we take uh, any grid circle on a sphere and consider all points that lie relatively close to this grid circle. Uh, and uh, if we consider all points at this, uh, within spherical distance alpha from this given grid circle, then we will consider, we will obtain uh, a zone of this alpha. Basically, uh, it's easy to understand that uh, in our case, in three, on a two-dimensional sphere, uh, a zone 
bounded by two parallel and equal circles. Um, so what should I mention? Okay, uh, Zotl is in the intersection of a plank of a centrally symmetric plank and uh, centrally symmetric about the origin plank and uh, this P X. Um, okay, and um, Hirsch uh, made the conjecture which is very similar to the um, con uh, to the conjecture of task. Imagine that we have so it, okay. I hope that. Um, it's very clear that zone, in some sense, uh, resembles the concept of, of a plank. At least it's, in, it's the intersection of a plank and a, a, a sphere. So, um, so imagine that we have a collection of zones, a finite collection of zones, covering sphere as the sphere as. Then we can say that the total width is at least pi. And you could ask me, why do we have pi here? And for that, just imagine that you would like to cover sphere by one plank. So what do we get? Then we consider some great circle, consider as an, an equator, and just need to measure the distance from the North Pole to the South Pole. And since our sphere is uh, of radius 1, so we get exactly uh, the distance equal to pi. Uh, okay, so... Uh, in 2017, we, uh, Zilin Jiang and I, confirmed this conjecture, and um, uh, also we characterized the equality case when uh, we have uh, equality in this theorem. So, what should I mention else? Okay, and now I'd like to um, say a little bit about um, about another problem in. Uh, discrete geometry, uh, um, which is uh, quite uh, okay, which is uh, related to uh, the context. Uh, actually, uh, we were inspired by this result uh, in some sense. So, what do we know? We have a collection of disks in the plane, and we call this collection of disks non separable. If we can draw a line in the plane, if uh, such that it's partition our set of uh, disks into two non-empty families, provided that this line doesn't intersect any of our disks, so so the, uh, on the picture you see uh, a few a number of uh, white disks and a red line, and the red line is uh, not good because it intersects one of the disks. Uh, and actually, this collection of white disks is um, uh, not separable. And as you see, uh, no two disks uh, touch each other. So it's not necessarily that the disks uh, necessarily touch each other. Uh, so, uh, and what is it? Uh, what happens then? Here is uh, Erdős's uh, common conjecture proved by Goodman and Goodman. So, what is it? Any inseparable collection of poles. Okay, actually, we ambitiously we can uh, introduce the concept of non separability in high dimensional spaces. So basically, we have we can consider a ball collection of poles such that uh, we can draw a hyperplane partition in them to do not uh, empty the subfamilies. Uh, and uh, we have any collection of balls, of uh, non-separable non collection of balls of ready R1 Rm can be covered by what can be covered by a ball of radius R1 plus Rm. And clearly uh, this bound is tight because we can just imagine that we have a collection of balls uh, standing in a row and touching each other such that the centers uh, are collinear and the points of touch are also collinear. And um, okay, this is a plane. Okay, the Euclidean result. It's an Euclidean result. And um, analogously, we can ask um, a question about whether similar results hold in other spaces. For example, uh, does it hold? Uh, okay, uh, is something uh, does something hold uh, on a sphere? And uh, here is a variation. So uh, on a sphere analog of a cap, of, of a disk, of a ball, is a cap. 
So basically, it's, it has exactly the same definition as above in the Euclidean space. And a collection of caps on a sphere is called unseparable. You can draw a great circle partitioning this family into two subfamilies, two non empty subfamilies. And um, what's interesting that uh, last finished Tor's zone conjecture is equivalent to the following statement. Um, so let's look at this statement. So for any kind of, okay, uh, okay, so there, there is some condition on the positive numbers, alpha 1, alpha n, that the total sum is less than pi over 2. Um, suppose we have a, a non separable collection of caps of ready alpha 1, alpha n on sphere, then they can be covered by one cap of radius pi over 2. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that we have collection of caps of relatively small ready uh, uh, such that, uh, and uh, this collection is non-separable, then we can cover this collection by a hemisphere, basically, because radius of a cap is pi over 2, so it's basically a hemisphere. And of course, one could um, guess that the similar state, okay, a similar state, okay, this statement can that pro probably could be improved. We can probably improve pi over, replace pi over 2 at the end of the statement by the sum of alpha 1 and n. And actually it's true. So in 2021, I confirmed this uh, fact. So basically uh, the, uh, differ the only difference in these two statements is the uh, last number. So uh, in the first case we have pi over 2, in the second, the sum of alpha, uh, alpha i's. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the first statement, the weak cap, the weak cap, cap covering theorem, is equivalent to um, uh, fish Todd's long conjecture. Um, in what sense it's equivalent? It's, um, it's equivalent in the following sense that a zone of width uh, to alpha it's uh, it's dual uh, uh, to a pair of antipodal caps of radius alpha and alpha. It's not uh, difficult to understand why uh, if you just consider duality in the following sense that a pair, uh, the dual object for two, a pair of points uh, of a pair of antipodal points is just a great circle, uh, an equator between these uh, two points. And uh, okay, and somehow using this uh, duality, it's not difficult to reduce uh, Fichte's own conjecture to this. Thing. Okay, um, now I like to say a few words about connection between different results. So, um, so um, here we have Banks lemma. And uh, this Banks lemma we, we use as the first step in the proof of Fichte's zone conjecture. But unfortunately, it's, enough, it's not enough to use only. Uh, somehow, uh, we use a so called carbon theorem uh, proved by Goodman and Goodman, it's so called uh, Erdős's conjecture, uh, as an inspiration source. Basically, uh, we didn't use it directly, but um, somehow we use uh, we linked uh, we linked somehow and managed to prove uh zone conjecture. Okay, Fischer zone conjecture, as I said earlier, is equivalent to the weak uh, covering uh, theorem. And unfortunately, okay, weak, the weak covering theorem doesn't apply to cap, the cap covering theorem, but if uh, okay, once I, 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 I uh, once I realize that um, okay, and, and at some point I realize that it's possible to use multiplex the uh, concept of multiplex introduced by Balitsky and combine the ideas uh, for the proof of facial zone conjecture with ideas of multiplex, I was able to confirm the carbon uh, theorem. And of course, on this diagram, there are much more connections. Uh, the cap covering theorem, spherical boolean, uh, the spherical uh, um, theorem uh, implies planar or the Euclidean statement. So, so for example, 
we can find the connection between the cap carbon theorem and so carbon theorem. And of course, um, Banks dilemma, uh, so multiplex, uh, in, uh, yeah, the concept of multiplex somehow generalizes the concept of blank. So somehow there is connection between Banks dilemma and multiplex of Balinski. Okay, uh, so now I'd like to say a few words about polynomial blank results. Mm. Uh, so, so what happens here? Uh, so we can look at the, uh, at the bank theorem in a very special case when our convex body is the Euclidean unit ball. So it's a very special case. And imagine that our blanks are uh, of the same width. And then uh, bank theorem says that the, if these planks cover a unit ball, then the width of uh, these planks, or of each of these planks, is at least 2 over n. So, because 2 over n times n is 2, the diameter of the, uh, the, diameter of the ball, the, uh, the width of the ball. Um, okay, I hope that's clear. Then, uh, let's, uh, let's do the following. But, Look at the uh, mid hyperplanes for each of our planks. Yes. Uh, if we look at the mid hyperplanes for each of these of our planks, then uh, we can restate the previous statement in the following way that we can find a point within our ball which lies a distance at least one over n from these central hyperplanes, from these mid hyperplanes. Okay, and uh, when we have uh, this kind of statement, we can ask um, ourselves, uh, ourselves uh, the following question. Um, we can look at these uh, hyperplanes as uh, linear uh, polynomials. And if we multiply these linear polynomials, um, okay, the, okay the, a hyperplane is a, zero, is a zero set of some polynomial of some linear polynomial. And if we multiply these uh, linear polynomials, we obtain a polynomial of degree n. So basically, uh, the union of n hyperplanes is uh, the zero set of uh, poly some polynomial of degree n. And uh, here is a natural conjecture, which was confirmed also. So we have uh, a non-zero polynomial of degree n. So then there exists uh, a point inside a unit the dimensional group a distance at least one over n from the zero set of the polynomial P. So this is the statement. So basically it's just kind of standing of the, of the statement in the mid. Um, so, uh, so now let's look at this statement. So what should I mention that um, variation of this uh, statement was proved uh, by Yufei also in 2022. He confirmed the statement in the homogeneous case. Also, using ideas uh, on the proof of this uh, theory, uh, we were able to prove uh, an answer. Uh, uh, we were able to prove um, fish or zone conjecture in very special case when our uh, our zones are not centrally symmetric. So uh, what do I mean by non centrally symmetric zones? Probably you remember that when I gave a definition of a zone, uh, they were defined as a set of points lying within distance alpha from some given uh, great circle. By non centrally symmetric zones, I mean we just take any circle on the sphere and consider points within spherical distance alpha from this uh, great, uh, any circle, this, uh, this circle. And then we get non necessarily uh, centrally symmetric zones. And we can ask a similar question to the question of Fehrstor. And so basically, uh, using the, this proof, Almost this proof, we, uh, we can find fish to zone conjecture for in non in non central symmetric case. <clears throat> okay, and here is some another statement uh, that also proved 
recently. So uh, basically, it's uh, uh, the complex uh, variation um, of the problem. So instead of uh, instead of polynomial of reals, we consider the polynomial of complex numbers, like polynomial of degree n, and um, we are looking at for a point uh, inside of the d-dimensional more a distance. Uh, so, 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 uh, so the only, okay, um, okay, uh, and we look at a point that lies quite far away from the zero set of this polynomial. So what's the difference between these two statements? Uh, so we have, we, I only changed uh, reals by complex numbers. The, the degree is the same, but we have to change the distance. Um, this is, uh, okay, the statement in this uh, form is not tied. But uh, somehow uh, we were able to uh, prove uh, a tight version of this statement. Uh, okay, I would not like to show it right now, but uh, we can discuss it after my talk. Uh, what's interesting that a homogeneous variation of this statement was proved by Kitbo in the 90s and also uh, by his student Ortega Morena in 2022. And uh, here is another diagram showing connections between different uh, okay, the, the connections between these two results. Uh, so uh, we, to prove these two results, we use some analysis. Uh, in the real case, uh, we use approximation theory, uh, a special role played by Chibyshev polynomials, and also Somehow, it's, uh, our result is connected to the bash things polynomial inequality. And in the complex uh, case, we used uh, the maximum principle, so the uh, central result in complex analysis. And the common feature of these two proofs is that we use one dimensional reduction. So, this is uh, some trick that we used in both cases. So, uh, okay, now I'd like to finish my talk with a number of questions. Some of them are more or less concrete, and one will be a little bit philosophical. So, uh, first of all, uh, we can ask about hyperbolic space. Uh, whether the um, cap covering theorem holds there, whether um, a plank covering theorem holds there. I don't, we don't know. Uh, also, we can ask about qualitative um, variation of the problem. What is that? Imagine that you have a ball, a human ball, and a collection of planks with total width less than two. Uh, and you, okay, and you, your goal is to cover as much as you can. Uh, okay, you, and your goal is to cover the maximum volume of the ball. And so the question is, what the maximum volume can be covered by this collection of planets? Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the natural conjecture is that uh, you have just the max. Okay, the maximum case if you cover uh, this ball by one plank, which is centrally symmetric. So this, and unfortunately, I, mean, I don't know how to prove this. Um, and uh, what else I should mention? Uh, okay, the, okay the, uh, this quantitative uh, revision is quite related to some problem of, uh, or, or to the classical problem in this geometry, so called uh, Knezer Pumsan conjecture. So um, maybe some of you heard about this. So uh -huh, here is a philosophical question. Topological is there? any uh, topological argument. Uh, so what do I mean by this? Um, uh, the central lemma, Banks lemma, uh, is uh, some result about existence. Result about existence of some point that is not far away from some given point T. Uh, that is not, and this point is not covered by our Banks. 
And so, um, in, in that sense, uh, this uh, lemma resembles uh, uh, classical fixed point theorems. It's uh, okay. So, so in, uh, in some sense, um, there is some similarity. <coughs> but on the other hand, uh, this uh, lemma, um, that lemma, proved using uh, some um, optimization argument, as I said. And in discrete geometry, there, are, there is a number of results. For example, Tverberg's theorem, uh, some classical results about arrangement of points in the Euclidean space, which can be proved on one side using topological methods and on another side using optimization approach. And uh, I believe that uh, this Banks lemma has the same similar, uh, okay, similar in some sense to um, the other theorem. And I believe that some variation of it could be proved, uh, could be proved topologically. Okay, uh, so what else? So it's kind of a philosophical question. And, uh, okay, I have no idea how to do that, but uh, I, I, I would be very happy to see a topological argument because it will provide much more information about, uh, about uh, okay, it will hurt the rest, I think, from a new perspective. How planks cover uh, point files. Okay, another question. Um, okay, it's uh, okay. The question about okay, as I mentioned before, uh, the um, planks uh, problem, plank problem uh, for polynomials uh, are connected with analysis, and I think um, that uh, in particular one can apply, okay, uh, among connections with analysis, uh, I think that one of potential applications of, um, uh, of blank problems, it's, okay, okay. I, I think that um, blanks, mm -hmm. okay, uh, as I mentioned before, the complex, um, if you consider complex polynomials or real polynomials, then we can uh, find a point far away from the uh, zero set of these polynomials with our, uh, with our ball. I think that uh, one can use similar ideas to solve hyperbolic case, and this will require some, uh, some knowledge Hyperbolic, uh, 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 trigonometric analogs of uh, in hyperbolic spaces, uh, trigonometric analogs of. Uh, um, okay, I lost uh, my thought. Sorry. Uh, okay. So uh, what? Okay, let me finish with uh, the question about connection with combinatorics. Um, um, Cap covering theorem is a theorem about uh, covering uh, collection, non separable collection of balls in some Euclidean uh, space or in, on a sphere. Uh, somehow, analogous questions could be asked in different spaces. And for example, we can study a question uh, uh, in other metric spaces. For example, we can look at the graph as a metric space and study the same, the same question. And I think that uh, there is a, a number of questions that could be asked in the combinatorial setting. OK, and now I'd like to finish my talk with a conjecture of Bethberg. So you have a, a unit disk, OK, a unit disk uh, with a small hole inside. And you want to cover this uh, disk by a collection of blanks. And uh, the connection, conjecture of Bethlehem that the total width of this collection is exactly the same as uh, in the standard setting when there is no hole. So uh, if the hole is sufficiently small, then we need uh, the total width of our collection is at least the diameter of our 
from uh, east or north. So basically, this transaction is all. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Examples, but I think this, this is the only problem where I could appear non trivial examples. Okay. So uh, I have to look at, okay, I have to uh, play this uh, with a drawing a little bit to answer your question. I have questions, I guess, the first one is the student, but what would be the correct formulation for the plan covering from the metabolic terminology? I understand what is plan, but I don't understand what is covered by it. Uh, uh, we don't. Uh, there, we know uh, there is no. Okay, uh, honest. Okay, uh, yeah. You asked actually two questions. Okay. First, let me answer your question that you uh, asked me. Uh, uh, it's uh, let's let's cover a ball. Let's cover okay, a spherical uh, ball, a yeah. hyperbolic uh, hyperbolic ball. And this case is unclear how to prove. Uh, so the second question uh, that comes from your question is uh, what if we have a convex region on a sphere and want to cover this convex region by, uh, by what? By planks. By, by, by those, yeah. Okay. And, yeah, and uh, unfortunately this uh, also clear what to do in this case. Okay. I think the properly space you can also consider a polygon, I guess. Uh, yes, um, but I think that there should, we should be more careful because uh, it's a bit more tricky there. So, um, okay, I would not like to discuss it right now, but there are, there are so, so uh, yeah, okay, I can draw something if it's needed. I could have drawn it here. Uh, so, uh, so in the in the Euclidean plane, we just can have collection of planes that looks like that. They stand, they lie in the room. What happens in a spherical space? Uh, basically, it looks like that. You have a cap, and uh, then you can consider a collection of zones uh, covering it in this way. So basically, they almost also stand in the row. Uh, but, but what's interesting, they overlap in the spherical space. But what happens in the, so basically what happens here is more or less equivalent to the following picture. So, um, so you have a cap, this is a cap on the on big sphere. And uh, our zones looks like that. So this is first uh, zone. I'm trying to know. Zones so, so <coughs> defined, is it points that are given distance from the ge geodesic? Or yeah. Oh, you mean in hyperbolic space? Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, so like on the sphere. Oh, like on the so sphere. Yes, exactly. The fact that in Euclidean space is the distance between two. But, uh, bisectors or yeah, but in the Euclidean space, you also can look at, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You we, can, uh, we can take it and meet a plane and look at points. At, uh, the fact that the, that the walls are totally geodesic is a coincidence in, uh, yeah. in the Euclidean space. Yeah, so, so basically the point is that on a sphere, if we want to cover um, a cap by collection of um, zones, then um, in a way that these zones kind of stand in a row, then these zones uh, will overlap, which will, okay, at least uh, two next to each other will a little bit overlap. 
But in a hyperbolic case, uh, when you consider, you, you would try to construct a similar example, then you get something like that. So basically, uh, uh, let's try it for. So basically, this collection of um, kind of analogs of planks has the same width as both as uh, this, but somehow uh, they bear some gaps that don't, don't allow us to cover the disk. And somehow this is a bit uh, embarrassing. And so, somehow it's unclear how to, uh, how to work with this. I have a question. Uh, maybe you mentioned it uh, in your talk. Yes, I forgot. Uh, so there is this uh, theorem about the zero set of uh, polynomials with real and complex coefficients in the variables, right? Yes. Um, and so you mentioned something like uh, uh, about the product of uh, hyperplanes, right? Yes. So in algebraic geometry, there is this kind of standard technique. For example, you pick a homogeneous polynomial in d variables, and you can consider. Uh, so the, the space of these polynomials is parametrized by some projective okay. space. And you can consider in that family the generations to products of hyperplanes. Uh, so you pick a, a homogeneous polynomial, you can degenerate it to a, such a polynomial, okay. which is a product of hyperplanes. So I don't know what the distance between these two is. Like if you put them in a family, how far they lie? But is it uh, is the proof of this homogeneous case something like that? Do they degenerate somehow to the products of hyperplanes or not? Uh, Okay, I'm a little bit confused. I, I, I'm not sure that I got your question. So, uh, could you state a little bit in other words? So, so basically, your question is about uh, whether I use homogeneous, whether we use homogeneous case to solve. The Did you use the product of hyperplanes? No, we not at all. Okay. Not, not at all. It's uh, absolutely independent. So basically, it's okay. I would say, um, and what's okay? Ah. Actually, there is, uh, okay, Daniel asked a question about um, tightness, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here is something uh, that I want to understand. Um, so, uh, just, uh, could I use uh, the, my slides? So let's look at this statement, okay? Uh, so it's clear that this statement is tight because we can look at, okay, let's imagine that n is equal to 3, mm -hmm. yeah? Then we can just draw three uh, parallel lines like that. And, uh, and so the distance between these two lines, say, so they, uh, the disk is of radius, of the radius two or one, yeah. so radius one, and so the distance is two over three, two over three, and here is distance of one over three, and here, is, here is also one over three. Uh, okay, so. Uh, this example shows that this theorem, say tight in case of uh, d equals to 2 in the plane and uh, when the polynomial of d 3. But uh, this is not only example. So for example, we can look at a circle of radius of this radius, 2 thirds, and this line. And we get exactly the same. Uh, okay, we get another example of showing tightness. So, for example, uh, we did not characterize all cases of equality in this theorem. So, so I showed you one example, but uh, you can easily find some some another collection of examples. But I'm not okay. We did not prove that this is. Uh, the proper collection. OK, 
Okay. If there are no other questions, uh, ah, there, there is one. I'm not sure if this question. Uh, some months ago, I watched a uh, presentation by Keith Ball. You mentioned this name. Yes, two uh, times. Uh, yeah. uh, he uh, presented some uh, version of bank theorem in uh, inner products. And then I uh, was interested, can this be applied for my components to cover the trade use of spherical code, spherical designs? And, uh, but I forgot about this and <laughs> now I think of all. But, uh, but uh, where, uh, uh, where he mentioned that? Uh, I think a bank theorem, but uh, your formulation is in uh, terms of distances. Yes. Okay, and he gave something in terms of inner products. Okay, let's be close. Okay, maybe it's not so difficult to, to, to translate. And, uh, so I would be interested to, to, to see this and to use your experience to, to check if it can be applied in some problems. Um, I mean, uh, so okay, the only thing I, I'm I trying to make a point and to, to you. Uh, <laughs> so I would say for conversations. I would say that uh, the, the bank schema yeah. was used in this context, yeah. which is kind of kind of related to spherical codes. So we uh, so in the problem of uh, yeah, I, 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 I felt that it could be related, but forgot about this. And, uh, okay. Thank you. 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 Okay, if there are no other questions, let's take Sasha again. Thank you.